we are officially on day two and we just got up and got our um, Jeep packed up and we are sitting down to have a breakfast here at the hotel and we're gonna be back on the road here in a little bit. So we had a great rest and um, I think today we're gonna have an excellent time. So kind of stay tuned. They said that there were two charges for $5 and something like 545 or something and for like a bakery and a candy store. Well, I still show they're showing on our temporary authorization. Only two days into our 25th anniversary road trip and my wife Chantel receives a text notification from our credit card company concerning a fraud alert. Calling our credit card company, she finds out that the credit card number was used to place some transactions out of state. And due to the nature of the incident, the company had to deactivate her card and reissue her a new one that would be mailed out within the week. The only problem is that we will not be home. Luckily, my credit card was issued an entirely different number, otherwise our trip may well have come to an end before we really even got started. To keep science as a portion of this documentary, may I suggest that thieves are simply parasites of our society. Just as in nature, parasites feed and harm their host. While thieves refuse to work and produce the fruit of their labor, they choose to steal the fruit of society's labor. Putting the fraud issue behind us, we spent just a couple more hours in Austin and traveled just a few blocks away to visit the historical bell tower of the University of Texas. It is a magnificent piece of historical architecture with a very dark past. During the early morning hours of August 1st, 1966, an American engineering student at UT and former Marine, Charles Joseph Whitman, murdered his wife and mother Later that day, he proceeded to climb the stairs to the top of the tower with many rifles, handguns, and a shotgun. He held the campus in terror for an hour and a half where he killed 14 people and wounded 32 others. His assault was ended when he was shot and killed by Austin police officer Houston McCoy. There are concrete areas near the tower where you can see the damage of bullets that luckily missed the psychopath's intended targets. I hadn't been born yet but I can still remember my mother speaking of the tragedy when I was just a young boy. So we're here at Barton Springs in Austin, Texas. Of course, probably by now you've seen that we went to the state capitol and to uh, the University of Texas. And Barton Springs are the natural springs that have been here since prehistoric times. And archaeologists have continued to uncover 
different sites here that give evidence to prehistoric people that came along here and used it for hunting and uh, you know just just a source of life for them this is a natural spring and uh, it's actually home of one of the most endangered species in the world the texas blind salamander and it's located only here in austin and it's actually found in some of the caves that actually feed this spring uh, here uh, you'll look at an area where they're actually cleaning this pool and this is a habitat that they maintain uh, that Texas blind salamanders have been found in. And so uh, this crew right here is actually just uh, doing their job to make sure that the habitat remains uh, conducive to the life that the uh, blind salamander needs. Barton Springs is fed by the Edwards Aquifer. Now, if you're from my area of the Texas Panhandle, we receive our water from the Ogallala Aquifer. Now, the difference between the Ogallala Aquifer and this particular spring that feeds this, the Edwards Aquifer, the Edwards Aquifer is actually um, open to the air where floodwaters and things like that actually drain into their aquifer. For the Ogallala Aquifer, where I'm from, the water actually seeps to the ground and it takes you know, a long, long time for it to penetrate and get to our aquifer. So aquifers are a life source. Obviously, from earlier in this video, you heard me say that this thing has been uh, going on since you know, prehistoric times. And that's primarily because it's spring-fed. The water's always been here. And uh, that's not always true with Ogallala. It takes hundreds of years for the Ogallala to fill up and uh, or maybe thousands, we're not sure about that. But the Edward Aquifer, it, it's always healthy when there's lots of rain in the forecast. So it's kind of how it goes here. The area in the park that was developed in this spring area for swimming and public use is actually closed today for cleaning. We'll open it up again at 7 p.m. tonight, but we'll already be on our way by then. Uh, for this portion of our trip, we're still uncertain on what we're gonna do, but we had some really great sightseeing here in Austin. But uh, this is probably gonna be about our last stop and we'll be back on the road again. So Barton Springs, if you ever have a chance in your Austin, I would highly suggest you to come by and check it out. It's pretty amazing. Walking back to the Jeep, I came across this awesome bumper sticker that caught my eye. Just knowing that there are other non-apologetic nerds in the world gives me great comfort. Back in the Jeep, Chantel enters our destination for Galveston into the GPS as we now begin to head to New Bronzefields, still with our sights on Schlitterbahn. Once on the road, we begin to discuss the logistics of spending the remaining afternoon at Schlitterbahn while still trying to reach Galveston this evening. It quickly becomes apparent that the limited hours we would have in the water park for the cost of entrance just did not make sense. Sticking to the fact that this leg of the road trip is destination unknown, we opted to look online for an area that allows tent camping, and we will begin our day tomorrow with a fresh perspective. Okay, so we finally made up our mind, and I don't know if we're going to Slitterbond, that's still in the air, but we are in New Bronzefields. We decided to come down here and try the river experience where you wrap down the river and do some things like floating in tubes and stuff, and we haven't done that before, so we thought that'd be pretty cool. Save a little extra cash, we ended up putting our tent up tonight. It's about 100 degrees out here, so it is hot, so not too sure what, how wise of a choice that was, but we are saving, oh, I don't know, probably close to $80 by staying here tonight, so that's pretty decent savings. We can put up with that for a night just to save a little bit of cash. So we'll kind of be here chilling out tonight, uh, floating in the river over here as you can see behind me, and uh, just enjoying our time here. And then we're going to be heading out uh, sometime tomorrow. We'll pack up in the morning and uh, probably go to San Antonio, possibly. So who knows? We'll kind of leave it up to where we decide to go at that point. But that's kind of where we are tonight, and uh, we're just going to try to make the best of it. Mm -hmm. 